hair comb from Frankie? I hope not. For some reason they have sent me the master collection, the all-in-one kit, the TS-100 with all the bells and whistles. There's a little tea stand with a ceramic base and a reasonable weight to it. Not exactly mandatory though. The TS-100 can just lie on the table, not a problem. Then there is a very flexible and temperature resistant silicone cable with an XT60 connector. It survives the hot tub easily and it's now covered in tin and flux, which is going to be its normal state anyway. It is a really nice cable, a little bit on the short side maybe. The set also has all the different tip geometries you could ever ask for. This pointy conical bevel one is my favorite for small SMD components. Whereas this one has a huge thermal mass and a large interface area, allowing for enough heat to be transferred into the most demanding solder joints. No idea what this is for. Could be used for wood burning or something primitive like that. Not really my field of expertise, sorry. Last but not least, the set comes with the TS-100 itself, of course, in a sexy metallic blue color. I can't see any hardware changes and that's fine, because it still works great. It all comes in a little aluminium suitcase, which could only be more dorky if it had a tiny handle. It's too early to pick these components. And I think we've discussed the TS-100 sufficiently in the last video. So, what's left to do? I've got just the idea. I've purchased another JBC cartridge, a slightly smaller one from the C245 series. Don't get me wrong, the original TS-100 tips are great and I've had no problems with them at all. But JBC is the second best soldering tool company in the world, at least. And I've got to try to make the TS-100 work with one of their cartridges. There are three minor problems in the way though. First, the JBC has a much lower heater resistance, which would destroy the TS-100 MOSFET switch. Theoretically, it can take 5 ampere of drain current, but in a normal 24 volt into 9 ohm scenario, that isn't even necessary. If I tried to put 24 volt into the 3 ohm JBC heater, that'd be magic smoke guaranteed. To prevent that, one could try to replace that double MOSFET with something a little bit more beefy. But that's a bit difficult, especially if you're working on your only soldering iron. So instead I'll use this alternative firmware and just limit the heater duty cycle so that the current is approximately the same as it was originally. The alternative firmware has a few other advantages too, but for now let's just say it works. I'm heating the JBC cartridge very carefully, because problem 2, it's not the same type of thermocouple, so the temperature readings are inaccurate. But that too takes only a few lines of software to correct. Problem 3 is the most difficult one. The connector is drastically different. If I had a metal lathe, I could make a beautiful adapter from copper and teflon. But because I have none of the aforementioned, I had to botch something together from 3D printed parts and screw heads. 
And it gets even worse. TS100 practically uses two pins, heater and thermocouple in series. JBC on the other hand uses three pins to keep the heater current away from the thermocouple. That's a better solution hands down. So wouldn't it be a shame if someone suddenly decided to put all the heater current directly through the thermocouple? For real though, this is not a good idea and I wouldn't recommend it unless you can afford to lose a JVC cartridge and a TS100 possibly. Let me try it for you. I'll report back if any problems occur in the next few weeks. I can afford it thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Oh and just another fun fact, the JBC C245 and the C470 cartridges are physically compatible, making hilarious combinations like this possible. Thank you for watching.